Let's go over some tips. First tip, if you have multiple objects selected, this is the outliner. You can see the outliner under Windows, Outliner. And so everything is selected. When you start to rotate, oh no, comes apart. Don't worry about that, just hit undo. Double click the tool and open up the tool settings and select, not default, but manip for manipulator, the center of rotation. And now everything should rotate correctly. Sometimes that doesn't work. And when that doesn't work, you have two main choices. Here it is flying apart again. One choice is to select everything, whether it's in the viewport or holding down the shift key and just selecting things like this or holding down the control key and selecting them one at a time. Going under edit group. And that creates this group subsection like this and you click the plus sign to open it up. Now don't select this object because the group, even though it's selected, it's not. It's not selecting the actual group, it's selecting everything on the inside of the group. Select the group right here in the outliner. And now you can rotate or scale or move without worry. To undo the group, with the, with the group selected, go under edit, ungroup. Another way to ungroup, when you expose all the objects, select all those objects, hold down the middle mouse button, and just drag it above the group. And this also will work with parenting that I'll show you next. Parenting is the act of taking one object and having it be the top hierarchy for everything else. So selecting everything here, shift click on that on the object to be the parent and press the P key. Selecting this object and now you can rotate and scale without any worries. To unparent, select all these objects and press Shift P to unparent. And you can see it unfolded here. Or, just like with ungrouping, just select all these objects and middle mouse button drag beyond that parent object and release. You can now throw away the parent object. The next tip is preferences. Sometimes when using Maya, you're dancing on the keyboard, you might hit a key accidentally, and then your preferences seem to not work the way you expect them to. Go into Windows, Setting Preferences, Preferences. Up here, upper left-hand corner, select Edit, Restore Default Settings, and then click on Save. Exit Maya, open up again, and that will restore Maya to the default settings preference-wise. Let's take a look at rendering opacity with Arnold. Taking a look at this render, you can see through here. Now, the material, the window material, to get transparency, that's going under Arnold's AI standard surface and under transmissions, just increasing the weight of the transmission. You can see in the viewport, nothing being shown through to 100% or near 100%. This, since this is a double walled object, you'll see some light bouncing in between these two. Now that's just not enough to see transmission in rendering. You have to go to, you have to, go to the second tab of that object's attribute. Unfold the Arnold menu and make sure opaque is unchecked. When opaque's on, Arnold will ignore any transmission of light going through things. When opaque is off, Arnold will respect the fact that light can pass through a particular material. Let's talk about getting better rendering results at the cost of time. If you're gonna use Arnold and other videos showed going to Blender and of course, you could use a render farm if it's a massive project. We're just looking to inspect this object. First thing, go under your render settings. If you're rendering with, with Arnold, make sure a render using Arnold is selected. Go under the, to select a different size. For your render output, go under image size, 
and you can increase the presets to HD 1080, which is 1920 by 1080, or you can type in the numbers right here. Jump over to Arnold Renderer. Click on this tab to open it up and click Enable. And I recommend a number like five to start out with because this will take a lot longer to render. However, there'll be great results. Once you do that, you can close this window, hit Render and wait. Next tip, it's an interface tip. You see how sometimes you take five. You might know sometimes when you render, you get the spin wheel. That's because somehow the UI got confused. Quick solution is to exit Maya, open it up again, see the arrow back. Excellent, right? Another solution is to do a quick render. Let me make sure my render settings are set to something low. And when you hit render, Hold the escape key down and click over the X. And that and that should bring your cursor back to normal. If it doesn't work, then just quit Maya, open it up again. The next tip is to get thickness on a model. Let me open up a previous version of this. Here I am in a previous version of this model. If I want to add thickness to this part right here, I'm going to separate it by selecting the faces. Maybe before I do that, to make it a little easier, going under Modeling Toolkit, Symmetry, Topology, and I'll pick this as my line of symmetry. So first part is to just separate the model parts on the face level. And by having Symmetry on, we'll make our work go twice as quick. Rotate around your view to get a better angle to see how the progress is going. Inspect your model and make sure you didn't accidentally select something somewhere else. And I still have to select the roof. Inspect it again. And to make sure I actually selected what I wanted, I'm going to press the delete key. Very destructive. And you can see I missed some pieces. Undo. That's a quick way to tell. Another way would have been to press the 4 key and go to wireframe mode. That gives you a clear view of faces being selected. 5 key and 6 key for shaded and shaded with textures. I think I missed one right there. Unselect those. Press the delete key. I did a better job than undo. So I'm pressing delete just to inspect what was selected. Again, a little dangerous. Make sure you have saved your file before you do that. Go under Edit Mesh and select Extract and just click off anywhere. And now, I'll press the 3 key, this piece is separate from this piece. Go into object mode, and I can lift this up. And you can continue doing that to break off the pieces. I want thickness though, let's say just to this canopy and the rest of the car. I'll hit undo. The quickest way to do that is through using Blender. I'm going to select both of these parts, I'm going to export, file, export all, and I'll call this car demo. And the type of export would be an FBX file. Export all. Next stop, Blender. Import the object into Blender, file, import, and select FBX. Press the period key on the numpad to zoom on in. Don't worry about the smoothness, that's going to be handled back in Maya. So both 3D Studio Max and Blender have a quick way to make things a little thicker. Select one of the objects, which is the car body. 
click on modifier properties. Under add modifier, select solidify. And play with the settings depending upon what you're creating. Maybe you want to go inward or outward for offset. And that's all you have to do. If I delete this for a moment, you can see now there's a thickness. This saves a lot of modeling time in any application. Just the ability to add solidify here, to reduce the max at the shell. Let me undo my delete. If you're dealing with many different pieces, like I am with the real car model, then you might want to follow this tip. Sure, you could reapply solidify onto this, but you want to be able to get all these settings on to select all the other objects in the scene, in this case, just this one, and then shift click on the original object that you want to copy the modifier from, press control L, and then from this list that pops up, select copy modifiers. And that's all you have to do. Now, when I click here, you can see these numbers match these numbers. And you can still edit the numbers independently. Export your model. You can do that by selecting all the parts, going under File, Export, Export FBX, and then check Selected Objects Only so you don't get any extra scene data. And I'll call it Car Parts 2. Export Selected. Export FBX. Jump back to Maya. I'm going to make a new scene. Don't save this. File, Import. And I'm going to import car parts right here. Car parts 2. Import. Press the 3 key, 3 key. Now when you lift this up, you can see it has thickness to it. Excellent, right? This saves a lot of time from figuring out how to get thickness here through duplicating, scaling, and bridging the two model edges together. So why have thickness to your model? You might need an animated shot where the model opens up and you don't want your model to look paper thin. So Blender and Solidify or 3D Studio Max and adding a shell to it, both will do this trick pretty quickly. Save you lots of modeling time.